Hello, Joachim here from the Deershof. It's raining quite a bit, uh, so I hope the tone is not too bad, but no wind. We have end of October, Jan and the land needs some rain. In this video, I would like to introduce and review a book, The In Intelligent Gardener by Steve Solomon with Erika Reinheimer. This book for me was a revelation and uh, because it destroys a mythos of organic agriculture that just compost, compost, throw compost, everything is fine. Steve proves here that this is not the case and I try to draw for you basically the storyline here and his focus is on we should generate nutrient dense food. Why nutrient dense? Because we need nutrients. If you eat a salad and it has nothing in it except a bit of sodium and cellulose fibers and, and I don't know what, it's pretty much useless. We need nutrients. Human body needs proteins, fats, carbohydrates to a lesser extent and we need a bunch of essential vitamins, maybe enzymes uh, and elements, chemical elements. Without elements we would die, without iron, without manganese, without phosphorus, without nitrogen, without carbon. Those are all elements and our whole body consists of those elements. So we have to, to feed them. And so his focus is making nutrient-dense food. And the start was of his story that he observed people uh, farming in an organic way, throwing a lot of compost and they were deficient. And they had bad signs of deficiency, uh, missing, missing, I don't know, calcium, other ions. And he shows pictures of those people and that for him started a, a search and a quest, what is it? And I mean, his findings are very logical in my way. Maybe I have to introduce myself. I am a chemist. I have a PhD from the a Department of Environmental Sciences of the University of Plymouth. I did my doctorate in a soil group. So I think I understand a bit the topic and not just here guessing and, and whatever. Uh, when it comes to soil chemistry, this is really my topic. And so I think I'm also relatively fit to review this book. So I said just throwing uh, compost, everything is fine, is a misconception because uh, it's easy. You make compost by decomposing plants and wastes. So imagine those plants are already, say, deficient of potassium. Then also your compost will be deficient of potassium. It's crystal clear. And if you throw that compost on soil, which is also deficient of uh, potassium, then your food is deficient of potassium. I think, it, or, let me put it like this, in the past I had the feeling compost is full of nutrients. Nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, sulfur, iron, manganese, zinc, boron, you name it, the whole pyramid of potassium. This is not the case. If you analyze compost often, 
I was really shocked how little there is of those elements. I believe the real effect of the compost is that you bring microorganisms to the soil, to the land, and those microorganisms, they do the job of bringing the minerals, the ions which are in the soil into solution, and only in solution a plant can take them out. So, Steve's main story is, you have to remineralize the soil, remineralize. So you have basically to analyze what is missing in your soil and then put those nutrients back. I mean, on my land, I have seen that potatoes have shown a deficiency of potassium, so black spots. So it was clear, I had to throw potassium. But if you want a clearer picture, then of course you have to do an analysis. And then Steve has here a whole recipe book how you can bring up your soil to the right relationships of all those nutrients in the soil. And you can use natural minerals and natural materials, and he, he pushes that, of course. But my personal opinion is you can also use, and I do it, just chemical fertilizers, because I tell you, a phosphate ion does not know if it came from a chemistry plant or a decomposing bone, or whatever. The ions are just ions. And they have no memory where they come from. Uh, and anything beyond that is esoteric. I don't know what. Of course, what is important? If you throw ions in terms of minerals or whatever, chemical fertilizers onto the soil. You have to avoid the osmotic shock. This is the main problem I see. If you throw those granules out, uh, around such a granule, there will be quite a high uh, gradient of those nutrients and concentrations probably too high for the microbes. So they will die around that granule. So I think an even distribution and, and uh, is very important and you have to do this with care. What I find interesting in the book is that Steve puts not much emphasis on compost, although he has written a book about it, but he does not bring out this microorganism topic. And concerning mulch, he seems to be quite against it. He says mulch is a breeding place for all kinds of parasites and diseases. And it avoids that the soil warms up nicely in, uh, in springtime. Uh, it's an opinion, but if I may add my own um, my own wisdom my own experience then I see a great benefit in combining the method remineralizing adding compost for the microbes the microorganisms to bring them in the soil and the third point mulching to give food to those microbes and if you do it right uh, it helps fight the weeds and of course you have to manage pests like slugs and snails they like to hide under under a mulch that's clear so but it's 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 a trade-off I mean you have to find your way combining these mechanisms, these principles. It's my opinion. This is <coughs> basically the story of this book. It is full of tables. It speaks about every important element. I like that a lot. It explains the role of sulfur, of oxygen. Uh, <coughs> 
talks about compost, it's really a good book. Maybe for many too technical, he speaks a lot about concentrations and, and um, <coughs> target levels and, and all these different uh, um, soil numbers to characterize the soil. Yeah, for me, again, both a revelation, but it's not easy to read. I assume for some, uh, I can only heavily recommend it. This book's book makes sense. I would call this beyond organic agriculture. So enlarging the, the view and the scope and getting a better picture how we get nutrient dense foods from our soil. And that's it. Hope you liked it. Please a thumbs up if you find it helpful. Cheers.